Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Adobe Live uh, with me, Maddie, and the wonderful Tony Harmer. Hey, Hello. Tony. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to have you here. Uh, this might be a different show than you were expecting today, but as you know, we are live. These things happen, um, but we're going to have some fun because Tony's got some great things to, to share with us today. Yes. <laughs> And do you know what? I'm so excited because I've been looking through the chat. Um, huge congratulations to Caroline, who is set to become a step grandma today. Uh, oh. so congratulations, Caroline. And I'm in the same boat as you. My brother and his fiance are in the hospital right now. So I'm going to become an auntie. Oh. So i um, very excited today. Um, hello to everybody as well. Uh, I can see you all in there. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, Sandrine. Hi, Robert. Hi, Gareth. Um, so keep the chat coming in today. As you all know, we are live um, chatting through Behance. So behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. And we're not chatting through YouTube. So make sure you go through Behance. Yeah. Um, Don't want that YouTube chat, or the other chat. Yeah. You know, you want the Behance chat. I know. It's all about Behance. So, Tony, what have you got in store for us today? Well, today I thought we'd de <laughs> disassemble an engine from a Harrier. Ch oh no, wrong, wrong thing. <laughs> today we're going to do uh, we're going to do a bit in InDesign and a bit in Illustrator, uh, working with some data, which sounds scary and dull, but it actually isn't. It's good fun. That's what we're going to do. Right. And we'll try and keep a straight face, won't we, Mads? We will. We will try and keep a straight face. I mean, I've been catching up on Tony's uh, feeds, you know, Adobe Lives from the last few weeks, and all I can, all I've seen are hats, goggles, <laughs> uh, some various disguises. So I don't know if we're in for. Oh, here we go. Yeah, let's <laughs> do it. We're into goggles already at two minutes past. So let's, let's see if I can force my ears down with the strap because that would be funnier. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. Oh well, do you know it's Friday, and I'm yes. you know it's the end of the week. Um, and what a great week it's been, right? So, yep, it has. Bring it on. And we're professionals. <laughs> we used to work together, though, Mads, didn't we? I know. We did. I've known you for about four years now, and I you've know. taught me. You've taught me a lot, actually, through our apps. So, um, a lot of credit to you. <laughs> oh well, a lot more credit to you because you've really run with it, and you know loads about stuff now, which is really good. I do. I'm loving Adobe Live. I'm honestly like meeting people. Joe yesterday, who took us through some Premiere Pro shortcuts. I have been, I've just been starting every day, and I've used Premiere Pro for four years. I've just been starting, going new sequence, title it, go, and I've never looked through all of the presets and all of the things that he showed us yesterday. Ooh. So it's interesting. So I'm learning a lot. Oh, that's so. You, are, I can remember the first video we made together. It's um, the Bruno Mars Vegas. Vegas thing, yeah. Vegas, yeah. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> There we go. All that way away. Anyway, every, I'm sure that's like so much fun for everybody. So, so this is where we met. And this is what we did when we first met. And then we went, and then we went, you know, and we don't want a load of the other stories. We really, really don't. Especially not how you trashed me at beer pong one year. But anyway, let's, let's, just, let's just totally leave that out. We won't even mention it. So, right. So what I want to show you to start off with, okay, is uh, doing a bit of data merging in design. Right, because it's a really, really useful skill uh, to acquire. All right, so what I'm going to do is I've got an A3 document here. Of course, document size is entirely up to you. But I'm going to do what I would do for laying out a business card. So we'll, we'll put a couple of things in to make it a bit more believable uh, in terms of a business card. And I'm going to pretend that I've been asked to make a business card for, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 people, something like that. Uh, and I don't want to do all of that artwork manually. So what I'm going to do, the way that I do this, of course, there's several other ways of approaching this, but what I do is I actually create a couple of layers to start off with, okay? And I create a layer on top called trim, like so. I'll add something to that in a moment, and the layer underneath, I call that art 
like so. And of course, you could have any number of layers. That's perfectly all right. So in the trim layer, I create a single box. So I'm going to tap M here to get my rectangle tool and then click. And I'm going to enter an approximate business card size in millimeters here. So 85 wide, okay, and 55 high. That's kind of business card size anyway. Okay, and then I'm just going to tap D here to get the default. Let me just zoom in so you can see it so it's not super tiny on there. Okay, and so that's all I need. And the only purpose of this box is so that I can see the printed boundaries when they're trimmed, okay, when they come out. That's the only purpose of it. I'm then going to take that box, okay, up to the top here and just park it. I'll park it at the top of the margins like so, just arbitrarily. I'll then lock that trim layer so I don't accidentally do anything with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to build a business card. The first thing I might do is I might place a logo or a graphic on it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the place command. Go out to the desktop here and I've got this nice feather logo from Adobe Stock just there. So let's drop that down uh, like so. There's, a, there's some great stuff around business cards, Mads, you know. I've actually got a book called Business Cards, The Art of Saying Hello. And it's fantastic What's how some people have presented themselves for their business. Mm. Okay, then uh, typically, so this one will be fairly straightforward though. Then I'll go ahead and get a text frame here. So I'm going to go into the sort of top third of the document just here. And I'm going to type... Um, first name, last name. Okay, literally like that. I'm just going to type first name. There, I'm joining those two things together. And last name, whoops, like so, like that. I'm going to drop a return in there afterwards. And I'm going to put job title. Okay, in there. And then we can go ahead and format some of those things. So I'm not going to set the design world on fire with this. We'll just get through the process rather than uh, actually going too far on that. So just choose uh, Helvetica here. I'm going to choose Helvetica Neu Medium there. And let's make the first name bold. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose bold just there. The job title, I'm going to make that nice and light. I think, in fact, let's go light italic with it. There we go, like that. And I'll drop the size down maybe just a little bit, go to sort of nine points, something like that. And I'm just going to increase the leading there to space that away. So that sort of thing. Like I said, not going to set the world on fire with it, but uh, just make it sort of believable just there. Okay, so nice and straightforward. I'm just going to make sure I'm kind of aligned with where I'd be. Now, these wouldn't, of course, be exactly on the edge of the box there. So I'd normally I'd also have a little bit of an idea in my design of where things would go in relation to the trim. But I think that's just fine where it is. I was doing a bit of a design and nudge then. I love doing that. Have you ever watched people at their screen? Sometimes they go like this. They go like one, two, three, up like that. And they go one, two down and they look at it and then they go one down and they go yeah I think that's about right and they're exactly where they were <laughs> in the first place I'd pound honestly for every time I've seen no. that <laughs> no way do you know Stuart's saying you should mix this up with Comic Sans <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah all right <laughs> no not really <laughs> That is, a, that is a violation right there with my it violation. It is, yes, yes. I will, I will issue that right away. Yeah, for write me a ticket for typeface up. choice. Poor typeface Absolutely. Choice. Write me a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, brilliant. So uh, the other thing I think might be nice on here, because there's so much information you could put onto a business card, but some of it might be a bit too much. What is the function of a business card, right? I mean, I could put phone numbers and everything on there, of course, as well. But really, you want people to know, you know, a few things like your email address, perhaps, um, website, where to find you. But the most important bits are who you are and what you do, I think. So for the other things that I want to put on there, what I'm going to do to save absolutely littering um, 
my uh, business card up, I'm going to be all modern and put a QR code on there with yeah. that information. Now, in case you've never seen it before, oh, lovely community people, InDesign has a built-in QR code generator. You find it in the objects menu, and here it is, generate QR code. Right? And so from there, you can determine one of several types of content that goes into the QR code. So plain text, which is the default, that's plain text. You can write whatever you want in there. Opened on a phone, that would typically open in a sort of a notepad type thing, you know, sort of notes on iOS and whatever the note app you have on your Android device. Um, on a desktop, would open up either in a notepad or text edit thing, so those kind of things. Web hyperlink is exactly what it says it is, right? Okay, so if you wanted to go to a particular website, then you'd basically put the URL into that field just there. Text message will be used by a mobile device typically, and uh, that will actually send a text. So if you were after a business lead, for example, you could write your own text message. So you, you'd, you'd enter the phone number it was going to from here, so your phone number. And in the message, you'd say something like, hi, I'm really interested in, it's great to meet you. Hi, you know, whatever, that's a bit, <laughs> when it's coming back to you, that's a bit kind of funny, but you know, you might put, please give me more information about this particular thing, right? And so there, people will come back to you with that message. Uh, email, exactly the same thing, really sending an email. So that's the address it goes to, that's the subject line. And then you pop a message in there, which they could of course append as they could with a text message. And business card carries all of that information potentially. Okay, so first name, last name, job title, cell phone number, mobile, all of the stuff that you can see there uh, can go in. All right, so you would generate one just for just for the argument's sake here for plain text, right? I'll just write um, hi Mads there like so and say okay, and it generates me a QR code like that. Do you know Gareth in the chat has said QR codes in Adobe, <laughs> mind blown. Um, I agree, yeah. Gareth. I never knew that we could do this in Adobe. I've been using like random websites to generate QR tags. And of course, when you, yeah. yeah, when you do that, you know, you're giving data away on a lot of websites. You're actually giving them the data that you're encoding. That's true. We're here. This is inside the app. It's protected inside the app. It's not being stored anywhere else. So That's it's worth bearing that in mind. Do you know where these came from, QR codes? No. I think it was from Toyota. Toyota needed to develop a system for car parts, right? Because they've got all of these different car parts and reading labels would take too long. So they created this system and these technically can still pass on information even when they're 60% destroyed. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Now, mad. It's mad stuff. You can find all of this out on Wikipedia, by the way. You don't need me to tell you that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so here... Well, um... right. <laughs> Well, Stuart's asked, PDF export and then import into Illustrator. Is that something you can do? PDF export? Yeah, you can, actually. Now, that that is a good, good thing. Let me show you something. I'm going to generate another QR code just here. We'll use the same thing. I'm going to say, hi, Mads, but in parenthesis. This time, I'm going to say it again and put two kisses on the end. There you go. One of the other things you can do is change the color. Now, this, of course, is somewhat limited to the colors that you actually have but you could okay go ahead and uh and swap this out in illustrator so for example if i go ahead and create that then i've got a nice blue qr code but i might want to be a bit more adventurous with it okay so what i could do as well okay is use the content grabber here so i'm just going to click on that because remember that gives me access to the content not just the frame Okay, and if I cut that, for example, you can see the frame is still there. Okay, if I pop across to Illustrator, and I'll just do a new document here and paste that in, okay, you can see that all of the bits are there, all of the different sectors are there. There's nothing to stop you from uniting those together so they're one shape, and then you can do whatever you want. So if you wanted to go ahead and add a gradient, get your gradient tool and draw across obviously you wouldn't want white in there that's the only thing because camera wouldn't be able to read it yeah mm -hmm. so it needs to have colors in all of the different sectors right but you could do exactly this right like so ah, that's much better 
I like the it is right it's more fun i did um first time i did that was for a thing it was back in 2012 for a thing called the designers fiesta um and we had rainbow colored qr codes everywhere so i'm just going to try on my phone here i'm just going to engage my camera and bring that in yeah it's read it so i don't know if you can see at the top there it's actually read the qr code and it wants to open it in safari oh, but that's just fine. your phone but no oh, and it says contents Hi, Mads, again, XX. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Yeah, see, QR Super. code. So other things you can do, by the way, with QR codes. So on the mailings that we send out from here, we have three QR codes on the front that link through to different social things. You can drop little logos in the middle. Yeah, so you can put tiny little logos in the middle, but what you have to do is test to make sure that they still work. Yeah. yeah, and that you're not obscuring one of the sectors that's still containing information. I would have thought that that would have stopped it working, but no, you definitely no, have. no. So we have them for uh, what's on there. There's Facebook, Facebook groups, and YouTube, and they've got different icons in. So Facebook's got a little Facebook uh, F in the middle. Facebook groups has got three people with a little F in the middle, and YouTube's got the little play icon mm. in the middle. But yeah, so so you don't even need to PDF them. You can just literally go to the object copy it out and bring it in like so just to show you if i go back to indesign and undo that cut uh from there if i can there we go if i just got the object and the frame it it used to behave in a different way oh no actually it's still got it so there you go still there but yeah, sometimes cool. it used to come in as an image but very very handy things uh to have Okay, so, but I don't want to do that for every, per if I was going to do a web address and all of the web addresses is potentially different, yeah, so let's just say you had a profile page on a company, that might be something else you have to put in. So the information at the bare minimum on this would be the first name, the last name, your job title, and a QR code that contained a link through to your profile page. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I need those things to generate automatically. So what I'm going to do is tap F to get the frame tool just here. And I'm going to draw a frame which will act as a placeholder. Okay. For that content. Okay. That's all I need just there. Let me show you the data. Okay. So here it is. It needs to be a CSV. Okay. So comma separated values. I've got this one in Excel because it's, uh, just sat here and it's nice and easy to explain. Later on, you'll see one that actually looks like a CSV with commas and whatever inside of it. Okay, but here we've got this. Uh, these basically um, dictate the labels for the data. Okay, so F name, L name. These need to be single words, by the way. Spaces can cause problems. Title and hashtag QR. Can you see that? Okay. Now, there are different rules for all of the different things. There's a thing on the Adobe help pages that shows you the different the ways to code um, different things up because there's a format for each different one. But here I'm using a web address. That has to be enclosed in quotes. Okay, can you see that all right? Is that, if I can zoom in about that big? Yeah, yeah. so it has to be enclosed in quotes like so and straight quotes, not curly quotes. Okay, for that, that's kind of important. And if you've never done this before, that might sound like, oh, it's another thing to remember. It's but honestly, take it one step at a time. It is actually quite easy. And the results, if mm -hmm. you know how to do it, right, can save you a lot of time. So and, you can um, see here. Go on. Carry sorry, on, Tony. Uh, before you jump into this, there's a few questions in regards to the QR tag. Yeah. Um, and somebody, let me just see who this was. It's a good question. Angus asked, can you import that back into InDesign? So once you've applied like a gradient to it. Yeah. Or um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, just save it as an Illustrator file and, and bring it back in. That's uh, the best uh, way. You can paste it, but the best way to do it is link it. Okay. And Jesse asks, can QR codes be another shape? No. No, they have to be rectangular. Sure. And Sandrine says, does it act like variables in Photoshop? A little bit. A little bit. It would be really nice if the variable, uh, if the variable scheme between Photoshop Illustrator and InDesign was the same scheme because it would make it easier for you to change things across all three things. So if you had an InDesign document that was also had PSDs inside of it and Illustrator files and you were making all of those things interact, all of those things work from the same data set, 
that would be really really useful but unfortunately it does not work like that they're kind of different schemes but it's sandrine in short it's very similar just not exactly the same because there are some things that photoshop can do that indesign doesn't understand there are some things that illustrator do that can do that photoshop or indesign don't understand okay so they but they're not entirely difficult data driven graphics in photoshop is a good way to produce tons and tons of graphics for things imagine if you were doing um a, like a weather banner for uh for a newspaper so let's say for the us so you've got 50 states right and possibly however many cities if you wanted to do it at that city level so you had the weather data coming in and you need to produce little graphics that sat on a web page or went into a newspaper to do that manually would take a lot of time but if you set up a scheme where you've got all of the icons and you can just switch to them you it makes the job achievable even by you working on your own so it's all good so here in this uh, am i okay to carry on is that all the questions man so we're all good yeah you're all good to carry on fantastic so i've got 51 uh names inside of here so we just have to imagine if someone had emailed me that list and said this is who it is that's their first name their last name what their job title is and their page just here that would be a job of work if you were going to do that manually yeah and potentially of course error prone so what i can do is I can go back to InDesign, okay, now, and I can go ahead and choose to kind of stitch this together, to bind it to the data is the correct term. So I'm going to go to the window menu, I'm going to come down to utilities and choose data merge, there like so, and this panel actually tells you how to use it. Okay, it says choose select data source from the panel menu, there's the panel menu just there, there's select data source. Then drag data fields from the panel to frames on the page, yeah, or click on them and create a merged document from the panel. There you go. So it's an easy memory way to do it there. So I'm going to go ahead and select a data source. I'm going to go out to my desktop into this data merge just here. And I've got my CSV just to highlight that again. Okay, so there's the thing you just saw. All right, and open. And then it comes in like this. So these are the labels. Okay, for the different pieces of data, so F name, L name, title, QR. Okay, so I'll actually work up this backwards. So I'll select the frame just here and then attach that to QR. You can see how that's changed straight away. Now I'm going to go into the text here. I'm going to select job title and choose title. And you'll notice how that now changes. Okay, so it's got these sort of double angle brackets on either side. Okay, then I'll choose last name just here. Okay, now you could drag this and drop it on top of it, like so, or you can simply select it and click on it there. So now, all of those variables are bound. Okay, so they're bound to those pieces of text. So what I need to do then is to make sure that it's working, first of all. And I do that by turning on preview, and then it brings in the first entry in the data set. Now, just another piece of advice is have a look at the data set before you execute this because you need to know roughly how many characters to include okay for your design otherwise it will break your design you'll end up with overset text although indesign will warn you if that's the case so i can now use these arrows here to cycle through and you can see the qr code changing and the ones that are becoming more dense that just means there's more characters inside the actual url okay as i work through it so that's really useful. But what's more useful now is for me to make this ready for a printer to use. And I'm going to show you a two step process to do that. OK, so I'm just going to go back to the beginning of the data set just here. Not that that's particularly essential. I'm going to go up to the flyout menu. Now you can export this to PDF. That's one of the things you can do. And it will create you a document, a merge document like I'm going to do but as a PDF. But I'm going to do something else with it. So I'm going to pretend that I'm preparing this for sheet fed printing. OK, so that's single sheets popping in. So not off a roll or anything like that at A3. I'm going to choose create merge document. And then I get this really nice little thing here. So records, every row inside a data set is a record. OK, so that's that's what that means. So if I pop back to the data set, OK, that's one record. 
that's another record that's another record and actually i've got 50 names in there because i forgot to discount row one okay so each one of those is a record let me just come away from that and back in here so i want it to merge all records okay how many do you want per page i want you to do multiple records per page okay generate me an overset text report with the document creation so that will just give you a little warning if there's no overset text it'll go no you're good tone is fine and it says it literally like that only more laid back <laughs> <laughs> an alert when images are missing so if you've got something where link you're linking images so let's just say you were doing a series of id cards yeah you can do that however you need to refer to the adobe help pages because it's very different the way you link to images on the Mac operating system to the way you do it on Windows. But you'll get an idea of that in the next part of the um, of what we're doing. Okay, so uh, multiple records do that and I could preview the multiple record layout and it will start to lay that out. However, you can see it's just spinning up for a minute and it's creating me a record layout like so. But I'm going to turn that off because what I should have done first was go to the layout here and set it up. So I'm going to change my margins here down to 10 millimeters. You set them for whatever your printer says. Okay. And that's fine all the way around. I'm happy with that. How do you want to arrange it by rows or columns? And that's just how it represents the record. So if it's rows first, it'd be record one, record two, record three, then next at next at record four, five, and so on and so on. Okay. So that's just fine between the columns here. I actually want to add nine millimeters just there and you'll see why in a second and between the rows I'm also going to add nine millimeters there as well now I'll just preview that layout so it'll build me just a rough preview and there you go you can see how that's working wow. just there okay I'll turn off the preview the final thing you need to do if you're bringing in images okay is determine how they're going to sit inside of the frames okay so how they're going to fill those things so i could say for example fill frames proportionally and then they would do exactly that okay so let's just have one more preview on the layout so it doesn't take it long to build it once it's built it once that's just fine this isn't an image it's a qr so so i'm going to say okay that's good so it will go ahead once i click that okay it will start building me that document so it creates an entirely new document OK, and then it populates it with all of those things. And it tells me no overset text was generated when merging records. Good. That's good news. OK, so I'll hit that. Let's just move the data merge out of the way. And you can see here that, OK, I've got all of those different pages wow. with those things on done in just a few seconds. Do you know, you've saved Robert a lot of time here because Robert says he's so old school, he would have done it all by hand. I know, but just imagine, it's you know, it, all of this. Mm. And I've, I've said before uh, um, on these that that my lowest billable segment is 15 minutes. Yeah. So if I can do this in 50, if I can do this in like two or three minutes, if people keep firing these things at me and they're formatted correctly. Yeah, I can just even though it's taking me two minutes, I'm billing 15 you know, That's which is, good. which is good. So let me and, just, sh go on, sorry. Sorry, Tony. Angus asks, uh, is there a reason for not setting up on master page? Uh, no, there's, there's a number, you could do that. You could set that up on a master page. Absolutely. I just chose not to do it here to make it nice and easy and straightforward. So it was one less thing to think about. So that is something you can do. And in fact, there's advice on doing that uh, on the Adobe help pages as well, how you could do it. But here it was just, not laziness, but just removing a step that might, you know, it's, it's complex enough if you've never done it. I was just trying to keep it nice and simple. Yeah. So let me show you the next step. Now, this is in a related panel and actually it has, let me just move that out of the way just a second. So if you remember, okay, I created another layer with these trim boxes on. Now, everything has been, if I just turn that off, you can see all of the trim boxes have been made on that layer. It doesn't matter that it's locked. InDesign will unlock it and relock it every time it creates a box, believe it or not. Okay, but they're all there. So I'm going to unlock that and I'm going to click and it will select me all of the boxes on this spread. Now, 
in reality, if you were printing this, it's quite likely that you'd be printing it on a big sheet like SRA2. So you'd just set up your document for that and you'd probably get 50 cards on there to be honest. Well, actually, well, you would if you, were, if you were close. But So I've just clicked here in the proxy region, which has selected all of those things. Okay, so I've got the whole lot there. And now I'm going to go to the data merges sister panel, scripts. Okay, and in here, I'm gonna go into the scripts that are built into the application. I'm gonna go into the samples and into the JavaScript ones. You can use Apple Script, uh, and I think VB Script is the equivalent on Windows, right? But I'm gonna use JavaScript. I'm gonna come down to this one here, cropmarks.jsx. I'm gonna double click on that, and it will launch me this uh, small panel or this small dialog. I'm going to turn off registration marks. They're the marks that a printer would use to make sure that color plates were all lined up on each other. But I'd leave that. They would do the whole thing on the sheet rather than individually. And so here I'm going to choose to have six point uh, marks. OK, offset three points away from the artwork. OK, and to have a stroke weight of 0.25 of a point, 0.25 of a point. OK, so really, really thin. Uh, tick mark and to draw it around each object if I hit OK okay that script will run okay and that's it completed I think let's just try zooming in now on one of the cards there we go so you can see each card I can now close the script panel here has trim marks around it ready to go so they could be lined up for the guillotine and then trimmed out from there so they're all there and it was done in seconds yeah that was and there's um, a, a question that's come in from Noor, and this is a good mm. question after generating the cards is it possible to modify the design and make the changes apply on all instances automatically you well it, it that's that's a difficult question to answer because it does depend somewhat on the nature of I mean, ultimately, the answer would be yes, because this is an InDesign document, right, with placed assets uh, in there. So if, for example, you wanted to replace the feather here with a different graphic, yeah, then yeah, you could just relink to a different file. If you needed to do things like change colors, you could do that using uh, grep. Uh, in a number of instances, you could do that. Um, but it really does depend on the changes. You'd, you'd have to evaluate. In reality, you'd have to evaluate whether it was worthwhile investing your time in fixing it here or whether or not to close that document, go back to this document, make the changes you want to make, and then run the, the command again to get it. Because it, it does it so quickly yeah, that I would, I would lean towards doing that. If you suddenly thought, oh, I meant to use a blue feather just there, you know, that's what I would do. But if you needed individual graphics, for them you'd need to basically basically do it in a couple of runs or or have the uh have the graphic linked in the data so here in the data you'd have sort of another code here for the uh header just there and then you'd have the ref reference to that link there so you could do that and you'll see that in just a minute actually um but not here in indesign we'll see it in illustrator so, so hopefully that answers that or gives you an, an, an indication of where there may be an answer from there. So, okay, all good. Any other cues before I, I quit out of uh, InDesign? Yeah, I think we're all good. Um, we're all good. Some of the comments um, about scripts giving people nightmares, <laughs> uh, Gareth. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, people are more happier colouring in than um, using scripts, it looks like, at the moment. I mean, all of the ones, so yeah, it can be if you're downloading them from other places, but all of those that, that are inside of the application folder, they've all been tested to to infinity almost by by the community and the team. They are rock solid and they are, they're worth investigating. You know, there might just be one script in there that saves you so much time. Yeah, so it's worth having a look. Yeah. I'm happier colouring in. But I also, I quite like, you know, this is a business that I run here. Yeah. And we need to get stuff done properly yeah. and out the door, sometimes at volume. And I wouldn't have anybody in here creating um, individual business cards like that. If it was a uniform design for a company that was going out 
we'd have all of the we'd get all of the data formatted, uh, and then we'd just run it like this because because it's it's better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, money's not the answer to everything, but um, it's handy to have some. <laughs> Especially, yeah. you know. Yeah, anyway. productivity is key. <coughs> well, whilst we switch over, just to remind everybody, all of the chat is on behance.net forward slash Adobe Live if you've got any questions for Tony today. So we're not chatting in YouTube, um, but we are on Behance. So. Cool. I'll just save that just in case I need to come back to it later. Okay. Good, good, good. Right. So uh, I'm also going to close Excel here just for the minute. Okay. Let me show you another data set now this one if you if you're more happy coloring in this one will look more scary than it is all right so just just don't don't fret about it right because also i'm displaying it as an actual csv okay Whoa. so i know it looks scary but if you look at the top here the co just think of the commas here as being the lines that you would see in that table so there's F name, L name, J. To, I went overboard actually on the number of columns I added in here. To be quite frank, company level, hashtag red, hashtag black, hashtag grey, um, hashtag purple, whatever else the other thing was. Can't remember on there. Can't see it because it's out of my field view. Uh, and at background and at icon, just there. Ooh. So what these actually mean is. This one with the hashtags in front of it in Illustrator means make me make me make my visibility change. Ones that have at in front of them mean fetch a different file yeah, for that. And that's going to be a lot easier for me to explain that. OK, if I actually go into Illustrator and do it, that's going to be the easiest way for you to see what happens. And this is all the data that you're showing us now that you're about to put into the card in Illustrator. Is that right? Into, yeah. So what we're going to yeah. do here is we are going to do a fictitious event pass. So let's just say we're running a small event for uh, a number of people. OK, at different from different companies. Um, and they are and there are some people there who are exhibitors. There are some people there who are attendees and there are people there who are staff. OK, so if you've ever been to an event and they've got different like color coding, if you've ever been to Adobe Max, you'll know that when you work for Adobe, you get a little red bar at the bottom of your pass and it says Adobe inside of it. If, you, if you're working on one of the stands in the pavilion, you get a little gray bar or a black bar that says um, uh, says something else. <laughs> says something like exhibitor. That's what it says. <laughs> yeah. And if you're just a, if you're just a, a regular guest, it says something like guest or whatever or whatever it yeah. is so it's different ones okay so that's what we're doing but i'm going to build it out for you so here i am in illustrator i have used a postcard uh document as a starting place you know in fact i'm going to actually start this from scratch just here okay so i'm going to just create uh, a new file okay i'm going to choose postcard now this is too long for an event pass Okay, so I'm going to shrink it down. Of course, I might have dimensions for my event pass, but there we go. So this is my event pass there, like so. Okay, I might have a number of things on it, like a hole at the top to put the tag through and that stuff, but don't worry about that. So my event pass might have a few things and I might actually separate them out into layers. I could do that uh, here. So what I'll do is I'll just call this one BG for background. And I'm going to place a file in here so i'm going to use the place command okay i am going to go out to my folder here which has everything in it and i've got a folder called bgs uh, not to be confused with three people who sing in <laughs> falsetto ha, 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 ha. right so i've got a gray an orange and a purple background i just wanted to make some distinction uh between those things but they are illustrator files they're like so so i'm going to place uh, I'll place this orange background. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and do that. And I'll just drop that at the top there like so. Okay, now my badge is too short. So I'm just going to make the artboard just a bit longer there. Not that that particularly matters. So let's just say for argument's sake, this is, I don't know, just one of the regular 
attendee passes. They might also have uh, separate logos and things on. So I'm just going to add another layer here. Okay, I'm just going to call this one logo. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a stretch of the imagination, this one. I'll, I'll lock the background there for the minute as well. But I'll go ahead and add another element. I mean, it could be anything. It's just what I thought of for today. So I'll go to this icon. I've got two icons here. Okay, a black icon and a white icon. They're like so. Okay, so I'm just going to place the black icon there and let's just place that like so. Okay, and bring that in. What I want to know is, are they enjoying this so far, Mads? So it's not scaring too many people, right? Well, there was a few people scared about the script at first, but the conversation has been great that everybody is saying, you know, that it's definitely helping you become more productive uh, and getting the, you know, the job done faster yeah. um, in there. So, you know, I think people are coming around to the idea of script. And it's our, a good thing. It is a good thing. It definitely is. And Tim, our pun master, was commenting on your Bee Gees reference saying, um, uh, streaming live. Uh, streaming, uh, live. <laughs> streaming live. Streaming live. Streaming live. Very good. So, <laughs> yeah. so good. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic, Tim. That's one of your best, Tim, for sure. That's really, really good. Uh, so, I'm just going to choose something uh, arbitrary here. Let's make it. Uh, Let's do this with it actually and let's make it much much bigger so this is going to be the first name it's kind of nice i think when uh you go to an event and your first name is bigger than your surname you know because mm. it's not the army I don't, I don't i don't turn around to you do i and say hi moss how are you doing you know <laughs> yes yeah. You know, you don't turn around to me and say, hey, Arma, hey, Arma, how are you doing? You know, and all of that stuff. I'm going to add an effect to this as well, just for giggles, right? I'm going to go ahead and choose, let's try arch. No, actually, I think I want arc upper or shell upper for this. Oh, nice, sweet. And let's just change it vertically. Yeah, I'm going to bring the main bend down. And actually, no, I'll carry on with that as it was. And what are you using there, Big Fish? Yeah, Big Fish, yeah. Mm, From Adobe I've Fonts. I've never seen that one. Yeah, like, well, they, you know, some foundries come and go, don't they pop along and make stuff. Again, I've got to bear in mind what the longest first name here might be, so I might actually step yeah. that off a little bit, just there, just for a minute. But I just want to show you that it will change that, so the sky's the limit, really, with where you go with it. Uh, then I'll add another text uh, thing under here which I will call L name okay and I'll make that smaller than the first name I'm not going to add any effect to it but I could if I wanted to but I'm not going to for that and then underneath that I'll just drag a copy of that um, because company names can quite be quite long and all I'm doing here is sharing sharing my tips for how I do this I quite often type something like company company uh, company in one line because that's like a ridiculous amount of, uh, of letters and then I work with that from there and think okay that's probably going to be the longest string that I'm going to get there um, but it's always worth a check for that so and I'm leaving those all in the same typeface just for the minute uh, next one more um, text box here actually I might as well just copy this one down so I'm just alt dragging a copy there we'll change this one we'll make this a bit more sensibler there like so i'm loath to make it more sensible but i'm going to do it let's go antique olive nord uh, just there and we will call this level there in fact i'm going to type it in upper and lower then i'm just going to use that switch case thing so i'll do change case to uppercase yeah to do that okay good right now level is going to be in white like so. I'll bring that back down in a minute. I'm just going to park it at the top here just for a moment. Then I am going to draw uh, three rectangles. Okay, so I'm going to come down to the bottom here and draw a rectangle like so. Okay, uh, I'm just going to tap. Actually, it's filled with just white at the moment. So I think I'll just go ahead and from my swatches, I'll just fill that one with red like so. And then I'm just going to select that, hold down the option key, 
drag a copy away and then just do command D to create a duplicate. And so I'm going to make this one filled with black, uh, leave the middle one at red and I'll choose the last one and fill that with dark gray like so. Okay. With me so far? Mm -hmm. Groovesville. Right. I'll bring the uh, type back down to where it should actually be. Okay. In the text. And I'm also, so I'm going to bring that to the front just there like that because it needs to be above all of those things and i think i'm pretty much about set there now okay that looks okay to me uh, but we will see in a moment or two so now i'm going to bring in the uh the data to do that i go to the window menu now i've got a lot of stuff going on in my in my window menu here because wow. i've got tons of plugins right so i'm just going to do variables here okay like so and what i have to do okay is just like in indesign you have to you know meet look, bring in a data source okay you can bring it in an xml or csv if you're doing an xml bit more flexible a bit more power much stricter um if you know your way around xml do xml but for most of us a csv is about as complicated as you want to get uh, from there it used to be so much harder. It's only, it's only been able to handle C, uh, CSV for uh, a couple of years. You know, mm. Before that, you had to do it in XML. It was still worth doing, right? But so I'm going to go out to my file here, which is called event CSV. So here's that file, just giving you a preview of that. And so this is a clearer way for you to see those individual record sets. Okay. So you can see here this, right? So I'm going to come up to the top. Let's just look at the top line just here. So here are our labels. Okay. And what we've got here is F name. So first name, Gerald. Last name, Skiva. Job title. So J title is how I've called it here. Graphic artist. Company, Mega Super Corp Incorporated. Okay. Level, attendee. And then I've got hashtag red, hashtag black, hashtag gray. Um, if I zoom, Mads, can you see it a bit easier? Is that better? Yeah, it's a little bit small, but we, we can see it. Okay, all right. So you'll see that under red, it says false, right? Under black, it says true. Under grey, it says false, just there, okay? So these are all switches. They tell something whether to be on or not. Wherever it says true, it will show something. Where it says false, it won't. Then I've got at background, and I've got the path name to that file. Okay, just there. And similarly, with the icon here, I've got the path name to that file. Okay, we all set on that? Mm -hmm. Cool. Right, so I'll go ahead and bring this in. And now all of my labels are here. So let's work through those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on F name just here, and then I'll come across to the variables, click on F name, and then come down to this thing down at the bottom here. There's a little icon. Okay, it looks like a little plug-in, like a Lego uh, brick, really. Okay, and I'm going to click on that. And you'll see now that becomes bound to F name. Binding just means they're linked together. Okay. I'm going to go to L name and say make that text uh, dynamic. Whoops, a daisy. That's because I didn't click on this. Those slow down tone. <laughs> we'll try again, make text dynamic. La la la. Right. Uh, no, I missed out job title. Well, that's good because this is kind of flexible. Right. So I'm going to bring company, company, company off down here somewhere. Right. That's a copy of it just down there. And this one, I'm going to rename uh, job title, title, like so. It doesn't really matter what you put in there. But I, I normally make that a bit long as well because some people have like group director of la 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 operations in fact do you know what um, my my wife's uh, my wife works for my company do you know what her job title is no <laughs> global head of unreliability <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure she loves that oh yeah she's thrilled she's not watching so i can say that without fear of, <laughs> of injury <laughs> later on right so i'm <laughs> just gonna go ahead here go for j title and bind that now i need my company name which i've wisely stuck behind something else so let me just uh, go and grab that so i'll just move this up out of the way just there and, and tony how did you drag copy in illustrator just hold down the option key or alt key and yeah. and drag with your selection tool 
there you go see nice and easy and then if you want to repeat that transformation so let me just do it over here i'll just do it off artboard so if i've got a shape like this okay i've got my selection tool yeah hold down the option key and shift if you want to keep it constrained to uh 45 degree angles but just otherwise hold down the option key like so and then if the next thing you can do you just do command or control d to keep repeating that transformation that's, yeah. good. that's how it works that's new uh, to me gareth InDesign does you. it as well gareth's trying that now he says thank you there you go cool so uh the next one i'm going to click on level just here go ahead uh, for my level okay and make that text dynamic now i'm going to go along to the three boxes just here so i'm going to click on the red box i'm going to go to the red label this time i click on this eye icon make visibility dynamic just there it's a small eye i'm going to zoom in on it for you just there okay like that then i'll collect the black one just here and make the visibility for that dynamic and then i'll collect the gray one just here make the visibility for that dynamic now those three things are bound i can select them i'm going to click again on the one at the bottom to make it a key object and then just align all those things together so they're in exactly the same place right so they're just stacked down onto that one mm. Then I'm going to go ahead and unlock my layer for the background. I'm going to click on that. Okay. And you can use as many layers as you need uh, to do the job. So now I've got that selected. I'm going to go background. Okay. And this is another one. So now the um, make text dynamic thing changes to make linked file dynamic. And you'll see it says linked file just there. And then I'll go ahead and go to the icon, click that and link that. Now, theoretically, <laughs> we're set. <laughs> oh. So what we can now do, you can see the field up here, data, data set, and you can build this manually, by the way, without a CSV as well. There's other ways you can build uh, these things, but the, the power is in doing this. So you can see that's empty at the moment. However, if I click on this downward triangle here, you can see all of the different data sets that I've got there. Okay. It's a lot. All right. It is a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data set one. Oof. No error on there, which is good news. Right now, typically we get an error. It means that there's something wrong with the path name to linked files. And that's what you need to examine and make sure that you've got the correct path through to your linked file. OK. So let's start moving through now so I can cycle through these for the next data set. So you can see the background has changed now. The logo has changed, right? The bottom now says staff. If I go back to the earlier one, you can see that was an attendee just there and an exhibitor just there. And I can cycle through, okay. And it's just changing like so. Wow. There you are. All you'd need to do then, and unfortunately I don't have time to do this one today, is to create an action and you can find them easily enough. So an action runs a series of commands that will export each one because it doesn't have the same export functionality as uh, InDesign does, but an action will do it very, very simply and it will just store them. You just determine what you want. So if you wanted them as an image file, you would just oh. go ahead and it would just run that and just keep doing it. You can go and have a cup of tea while it's doing it. And then they're all there in a folder for you and done. And you could put a good good few hundred in there. Yeah. And, and how it. long would this take? How long to, it... to run? From start to finish. To start. Well, it, once you're used to doing it, you can do it. You could set this up and do it in about half an hour. Yeah. To do it. And it if you're good with, um, so I, as a text editor here, I use something called BB Edit because it's really, really powerful. And I can get to different parts of that text really quickly. And you can see I've selected all of the things now that say false there in one go. And I could replace all of those in one go. You can also do what's called text processing. So you can split things up. It's a very, very powerful thing, but you need to learn. It's a bigger learning curve for that. When I started, I basically just bought the thing, got into Excel, got Excel to try and split the data up and then fixed it from there. 
Mm-hmm. Better still, if you've got a good relationship with a client and you were doing things like uh, like event badges or party invites or whatever, yeah, um, you could you could say to them, right, okay, well, I put the onus on them to deliver the work. You know, you're not really paid for text processing, and yeah. just say that's fine. I'll do that job for you. This is how much it will cost, uh, and you need to provide me the data in this format mm-hmm. and give them an illustration of what they need to provide. Yeah, and get them to do it because the chances are they can pull those records from some other piece of software and give you all of the records in one go. Yeah, to make yeah. it easier. If it's from a mailing list, they could pull that in seconds. But once you've got it set, once you've drawn the indiv- you know, drawing the individual elements is one thing. But sometimes you can recycle stuff that you've already got. But yeah, yeah, half an hour, and to run, this would take around about. Uh, so there's 40 things in here. Take around about four seconds to run. Wow. To have all of them done. That's so good. And then Caroline asks, can you output to PDF? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you have to, that's a little bit hacksy hacksy though, because when you run the thing typically, uh, actually with the export assets now, you probably could do that. Yeah. As well. There's, I, I've never done that. I've normally exported to an image format, but you should be able to because export assets can export uh, as a PDF. Yeah, so it's a valid file type for export. And in fact, it is from the file menu as well. So you can file, uh, export as, and you could choose, because you can save as as well in um, in Illustrator. So yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh. And Noah thinks um, you're a magician. He's asked, is Tony a magician? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Indeed. And Angus says, so good. Mind is Friday fried. Wow. And, uh, and fortune teller as well. <laughs> cool <laughs> but yeah and Caroline says you know Brill um, then I can put it into Acrobat ready for print absolutely so these yeah. are all big time savers that you've you've shared today I had no idea that InDesign could do QR tags there you go that's big I was as you said I was giving data away using random websites that generate QR tags so that's a that's yeah. a really good one for me so. it, it was always worth considering that you know when you use some of these services that say they're free you, you have to ask well, what is the actual product? And nine times out of 10, it's you and your information, you know. That's true. So, so it's always worth thinking. Even if you even if you don't see yourself giving the information away in the first place, you might think, well, I haven't typed anything with my name in it, but every machine connected to the internet has an IP address, um, mm. you know, so. Data's always sold, isn't it? And then you get is. emails and spam and calls. Uh, yeah, well, Gareth, from Gareth, me Gareth, as well, largely. <laughs> Well, I just email you about eight times a day anyway. <laughs> nice. Well, um, Gareth says something lovely here. He says, um, Tony gives a very mature overview of practical day-by-day design so you don't get paid to autofill. You don't get paid to do that and the other. It's reinforcing to hear. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. And, you know, what I really want, or what I just want is, you know, it's a competitive market out there, especially right now. And, and it's going to be that way for a little while, unfortunately. What I want is I want you to have the tools that will help you to to kind of make decent money at doing it, you know, and, and be efficient. And when you can be efficient and reliable, then people know they can come to you for for work. And hopefully that'll, that'll keep you going and help you to connect, carry on building, you know. So there you are, super. Yeah, efficiency and design. I couldn't agree more, Gareth. Very there true. Cool, and Stuart says the tools and the talent to stand out. Very true. There you are. That's it. Very true. Well, thanks, Tony. I think if there's any other questions, I know there's a couple of minutes left. Robert has said that that was a fab, enlightening session. Um, And Noor has said, uh, just imagine, you get to do 100 business cards, you rate it 100 times and do it just once. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Exactly. Perfect. Clients don't know how long it takes to do these things, Mm. right? It's, It's... To them, it's magic, provided you're not reasonable. If you, you know, if, if they say, "How much will you, I need business cards for 250 people in my company," you know, and you say it's going to be 11 million pounds, <laughs> they're going to just <laughs> freak out. Mainly because you're clearly enumerate, but <laughs> but you know, if it's reasonable, you've got bear in mind you've got to charge for the design, right? But don't char- yeah. you know if you can avoid charging so much for the production. Yeah, and so you're, you've got because this gives you agility as well, right? 
if there's suddenly a change in that stuff, the chances are you've only got to change it in the data or make a modification to this piece of artwork and then it will output again quickly. You haven't to go, got to go foraging through a whole load of different cards to find and make a change. And remember, every time you're keying something in, the potential for error arises. Whereas if they're giving you the information, it's their fault. Yeah, And so you can legitimately say, that's fine, but you're going to get charged for that because you didn't provide it to me in the right way. And of course, set your terms accordingly. Yeah. There you go. No, definitely. Well, it's been fun, Tony. Honestly, I always have a laugh, um, you know, when we're on a, a good Adobe Live with you. So uh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank Lots you. of positive chat in, in there as well. All of you, thanks for joining. We'll be back on Monday at midday with another yes. for you. So see you all again soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. You, Tony. Take care. Have a nice weekend. Bye, everyone.